Ne var ne var toprağın içi kırılmanıyor lan şimdi. İyi ya sen. Hadi ona. Hello everybody, welcome to the Estrial circuit for the opening qualifying session of the 2018 International GT Open season. Well, the more things change, the more they stay the same. We've got, again this year, a huge field for the International GT Open. Masses of strength in depth, but of the 22 cars out this weekend, only four of them same driver combinations which competed in the 2017 season well, the year starting with 30 minutes of qualifying to set the grid for the first of 14 races around seven of Europe's finest circuits we do have though the reigning champion Giovanni Venturini back at the wheel of his Imperial Racing Lamborghini Huracan this year though honoring the young Dutchman Jerome Mull, one of several young chargers across the, the Lamborghini squads this season. Jerome Mull, who raced with success in Lamborghini Super Trofeo in North America last year. So, history of success in the Italian GT Championship. He and Venturini make up one of three in parallel racing combinations we've also got three Teo Martin Motorsport BMWs as well alongside plenty of other newcomers including that very brightly coloured ARC Bratislava entry of Miro Kompa and Konstantin Kalko all the field of course running on the Michelin tyre and it is more announcing the partnership with Michelin over the winter Alongside the fantastic on track performance given by the Michelin Tart, there is also an awful lot of off track paddock activity happening throughout the year as well. For now, though, the drivers are just focused on warming up their tyres. There's a problem in the background at turn one. Miro Konopka running very, very wide in the ARC Bratislava entry. Konopka, who finished third in the LMP3 class in the Asian Le Mans Championship last year. He hasn't done anything too serious to damage the car as we follow the Termati Motorsport AM class entry of Marcio Basso, sharing this season with Thiago Marquez, because as we had in 2017, we've got three very strong classes in the International GT Open this season. We've got the Pro class, the Pro-Am class, and the Am class. And the entry for the season is spread neatly between all three. Now, here is one of the two Daiko Lazarus Racing, Lamini Huracans. This is the car of Giuseppe Cipriani and Toby Sari. And quickest in the final of yesterday afternoon's free practice session, Cipriani, very, very experienced competitor, mainly in single-seaters, having spent the last two seasons in the Formula V8 3.5 championship, and he has got a young charger, Toby Sari, alongside him, and they will be in contention for the Pro-Am honours, as will this car, the sister car of Miguel Ramos, former champion, and Riccio Crestani former champion and it is Riccio Crestani the 2016 International GT Open champion who's at the wheel of the car for this opening qualifying session of the season Lazarus team who claimed the title on their debut year in the, in the championship with Crestani and Biaggi behind the wheel returning to the series another champion another team returning to the championship is Ombra Racing Previously saw them with Ferra Ferraris there, back the Lamborghini Huracan, and a very strong drive lap in the form of Fernando Reese, who's got great experience from the World Endurance Championship, alongside Damiano Fioravanti, the young Italian making the switch across from single seaters, and Reese Fioravanti slotting naturally into 
the Pro Championship. Meanwhile, our reigning AM champions, Luis Silva and Antonio Coimbra, returning to the championship once more in their sport, a new Mercedes, which is being pursued on track by Kang Ling in one of the two Vincenzo Suspiri Racing Lamborghini Huracans. Ling, who we saw last year, route 16 from the championship with Raton Racing Lamborghini, switching to the VSR squad, and he is going to be partnering Nicholas Costa, former Italian GT champion. So, strong lineup for the Jesus Spree Racing Lamborghini Huracans. Meanwhile, already all change in the pits. And it's the term RT Motorsport team bolting some new tyres on to leave the number three car, Lorenzo Beirao de Viega. Twice a winner last year, the Portuguese, and he has got the Argentine, Juan Cruz Alvarez, alongside him. So in terms of the standings thus far, it's Mikel Mack, who is currently quickest at the wheel of the Lusic Racing Ferrari 488. Second then is Tom Onslo Colt in the SPS Automotive Mercedes. He and Valentin Pierberg returning once more for a tilt at the Pro-Am Championship. Michele Rugolo is then third in the second of the Lusic Racing. And in fourth place is Jamie Campbell Water in the Drivex Mercedes and Campbell Water alongside Ferdinand Habsburg this weekend. Potentially very, very interesting combination. So here is Michele Rugolo. Rugolo, who we last saw a couple of years ago in the International GT Open when he was partnering passing the Thoras en route to second overall in 2015. And he is going to be alongside Alex West in a shot at the Pro-Am Championship. This then is the car of Mikel Mack and Alessandro Pierre Guidi. Extremely strong drive lineup. Mack, who finished fifth in the championship last year alongside Mirko Ramos. Pierre Guidi, who slots into the team alongside him, the reigning World Endurance Championship LMGTE Pro driver, Pro Champion rather. So immediately the Ferrari 488 on the pace and Mack goes quicker 1 minute 37.160 now what we saw last year in these qualifying sessions was that depending on how the teams wanted to use their tyre allocation for the weekend you might get just one or two flying laps at the start of the session for some of the front runners and that would be it and Mack certainly pushing trying to push on for another lap he was just picking his way around one of the Teo Marti Motorsport BMWs before accelerating out of Turn 4 along this back stretch through Turn 5 behind the paddock area and the road falling away down towards Turn 6. So it's Ferrari from Mercedes, Ferrari, Lamborghini, Lamborghini, Mercedes in the top six. Also got Audi and BMW well represented in the field. Mack is this lap going to be an improvement. He's currently just over two tenths of a second clear of Tom Onslow Cole. Here is Onslow Cole. And the SPS Automotive Mercedes has been completely reliveried this year after the striking green livery of 2017. It's now the Richard Mille. Very, very classy livery for the SPS Automotive Mercedes. That car looking really good in free practice yesterday. And Onslow Cole, Valentin Pierberg, they were there or thereabouts last year for the Pro-Am honours. Some races went brilliantly, some a little bit inconsistent. The driver pairing staying the same. They know the car, they know the tracks now. And they could well threaten for the Pro-Am title. After Valentin Pierberg, who was the ever-present last year, Onslow Cole had a couple of other commitments at times, finishing fifth in the Pro-Am Championship. Onslow Cole, however, unlikely to improve on this lap. There has been an improvement though up into fifth position coming from one of the most successful drivers in the history of the International GT Open Andrea Montermini making a return for the first time since 2014 It's a new squad for Montermini, the RS Racing Ferrari the hill partner with the reigning Ferrari Challenge Europe champion Daniele Diamato, so another very strong driver pairing Salvos have been fired. Quite a few of the cars really peeling back towards the pits as Lorenzo Bear out of Jaeger gets on the brakes, moves down through the gears into turn one. 
merit of Jaeger, who was very unfortunate last year. If there was any bad luck going around, he is a superstar co-driver with the, the recipients of it. He wanted to pit lane for the SPS Mercedes Monzo Cole. So the third point of the session is Mikel Mack, who is currently quickest on Slow Cole second, Michele Ruggolo third, Fabrizio Cristani fourth, Lorenzo Berard of Jaeger fifth, Andrea Montermini sixth, Kangling in seventh. Cello Hart in eighth, Antonio Coimbra in ninth, and Jamie Campbell Walter completing the top ten. As Ruggolo runs down to the very far end of the pit lane, where he'll find the Lusig Racing team. Gets waved into position. Car will go up on the stand to see whether or not they decide to bolt on some new tyres at this stage. The sister car, the pace setting car in the session of Mikel Mack comes into position as an improvement up into second position place now for Fran Rueda in another of the Teo Marti Motorsport BMW's Raider who finished runner-up in the championship last year goes second. He's only 36 thousandths of a second now adrift of Mikel Mack. We are currently following Rick Broikers in one of the Imperial Racing Lamborghini Huracans. Broikers, who finished second last year at the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Europe Championship. And this is his first final lap of the session, but it looks as if it's going to be a very, very good one. He's quicker than anybody else through the first two sectors. He comes out to the parabolic and now accelerates along the start and finish straight. He's not had traffic to worry about. So across the line comes Rick Broikers, who does go quickest, a 1 minute 36.9 for the Dutchman. And that gives him a two-tenth of a second advantage over the rest of the field. It means that Mikel Mack is going to, if he wants pole position, have to go back out there. The is it racing team. We've seen that on the timing screens. They'll now contemplate their next move. Meanwhile, we've lost Fran Rueda's best time for track limits. Here comes Andrea Montermini then in the RS Racing Ferrari. Absolutely immaculately turned out car. Looks brilliant up close. The Montermini goes sick. The 1 minute 37.7. Very experienced Italian who actually competed here at Estra in the 1995 Portuguese Grand Prix with a Pacific car. And by my reckoning, I think he's the last driver who is active in a contemporary sport programme who would have competed here at Estoril in Formula One. Meanwhile, across the gravel for Kang Ling, fortunately not hitting anything in the Vincenzo Suspiri racing lap beginning now for Montermini. This first second lap, not an improvement. And in fact, he has slipped down the order. But he's currently in ninth position, and the reason for that is he lost his best time due to track limits. Now, a driver we might want to try and find if we can is reigning champion Giovanni Venturini. Venturini, who's currently in the final sector of the lap, is flying. He's just set the fastest middle sector. Anybody here? He is now across the line. He goes third, a one minute thirty-seven point one for Giovanni Venturini. Oh, this is desperately, desperately close. We've got the top three cars covered by two tenths of a second. Venturini, he's got clear track ahead of him. The knows exactly how the Imperial Racing Lamborghini works. We put together a masterful campaign last year to claim the crown. It all got a little bit tense at the end of the season in Barcelona. He, alongside Thomas Biaggi and Marco Mapelli, got the job done. It's a little bit wide, they're coming out of Turn 4, and again, we're seeing a lot of times being disqualified due, due to track limits. Venturini thus far on this lap, he's a little bit up on where he was last time around. As he heads through Turn 6, now downhill. To turns 7 and 8, another of the Hurricanes. Sprinting along over the line. A little bit caught up in and amongst the traffic as well. That's Raffaele Giamaria. Giamaria goes fifth with that last lap. 
Chimera, another experienced and very successful campaign in the International GT Open, amongst other things. It's just caught up by one of the Mercedes. out of that lap as a result. Giuseppe Cipriani is on course for an improved lap time. We'll stand in 20th, Oliver Wilkin, Oli Wilkinson in the Optima Motorsport Audi has just posted a very good time, which he lost due to track limit infringements. So, all go in the RS Racing pit box. Conference with Andrea Montermini. Currently in ninth place is Rick Broikers, who is currently quickest. Giovanni Venturini is in second. Mikkel Mack, third. Fourth is Tomons Locol. Fifth, Raffaele Giamaria. Here is Antonio Coimbra. He currently leads the AM class. Very impressive, 12th overall for Coimbra. And he leads the AM class from Andre Lewandowski and Alexander Raquina. Radowski and Raquina, 16th and 17th overall, respectively. In terms of the pro am class, that's headed by Tom Onslow Cole from Raffaele Giamaria and Michele Rugolo. Now, here comes Fabrizio Cristani, and this is going to be a good lap for Cristani. How good? Good enough for fourth place. There's his co driver, Miguel Ramos, watching on as Cristani, a 1 minute 37.2. So now we've got the top four cars covered, but separated by under three tenths of a second. All and a little bit of coming together or something coming out of the pit lane. It's Ollie Wilkinson in the Optima Motorsport Audi who's been caught out now. Is there damage there to the front left corner of the car as he looks to get back underway. None of this of any concern for Cristani, but it's not going to be the improved lap time for the Italian as we're over the halfway point in this session. Where are the improvements going to come on this lap? Possibly not too many. The pit lane is fairly full. Nando Reese has just set his best lap of the session to go 12th in the Honda Racing Lab. Now, here is another look at what happened. And it was a big spin for Wilkinson coming through turn one. And then, as he fired it up and executed the three point turn, out of the pit lane comes one of the Mercedes to be confronted by a fairly static Audi. Frolly Wilkinson, this is only his second full season of car racing. Antonio Coimbra and Louis Silva, deep in conversation. And this bought a new pit box. Now here is Fernando Reese, and Reese has just posted his best first sector of the session. He's in 12th. His last lap was a 1 minute 38.5. So 1.6 seconds away from pole position. But that, a good middle sector as well. And it's so tight in the midfield that an improvement of a tenth of a second here for Fernando Reese would be enough to pull him up into the top 10. There's our provisional pole such a Rick Breukers. Marcello Hahn, one of the Pro-Am class front runners alongside Alan Cadet, waiting at the wheel of his Trivets Mercedes. And Fernando Ruiz does indeed go into the top ten as he flashes through. 1 minute 38.4 for the Brazilian. Just over ten minutes to run in the session. Here in the Crypto Motorsports Mercedes, Marco Zanatini, the endurance um, class champion from last season at the wheel great to have the crypto motorsport team back in the championship meanwhile giuseppe cipriani has just posted his best lap of the session a one minute 39.4 cipriani who was a contemporary of jacques villeneuve in italian formula three back in the late 80s early 90s so has a little bit of a wobble coming out of turn three that's out of the throttle Antonio Coimbra on his outlap powers past him. So Rick Broikers has currently got pole position by just over a tenth of a second from Imperial Air Racing teammate Giovanni Venturini. Mikkel Mack then is third. What's third? Jamie Campbell-Walter goes second in the Drivex Mercedes. Campbell-Walter 
course, a former World GT champion. A 1 minute 39.9 for Campbell Walter. Just 15 thousandths of a second off pole position. So we'll see if we can pick up the Drivex Mercedes. Second of them, Campbell Walter. Works with his protege, Ferdinand Habsburg, this weekend. Pro lineup. We continue to follow Antonio Coimbra. So it's Broikers on pole, 15,000 second clear of Jamie Campbell Walter second. Giovanni Venturini is third, just a tenth of a second to drift to pole position. Then Mikko Mack in fourth, within two tenths of the pole mark. Meanwhile, the Luzic Racing Ferraris are out and flying in formation. Mack ahead of Michele Rugolo. They're coming through to complete outlaps. Antonio Coimbra also completing an outlap. way downhill through turn one. It's just going to catch the Felicium rear emerging from the pit lane. Now here then is Jamie Campbell Walter, the Drivex Mercedes. This lap not going to be anywhere near as good as the previous one because he's completely backed out of it. But then he's going to be in a position, I'd imagine, to board himself into some track space and really go for it. Campbell Walter over a decade of success in World Championship GT racing. Ferdinand Habsburg, former star of the Euro Formula Open, double running with European Formula 3 this year as Campbell Walter accelerates through. He needs to just find 15 thousandths of a second. It's almost a blink of an eye. And that might be good enough to propel him into pole position, but Mikel Mack could well have something to say about that as well. Mack coming towards the end of what has been thus far a very promising lap. He's gone quicker than anybody else through the middle sector. If he can find two tenths per second, that's going to be good enough for pole position. If he can find a tenth per second, it's going to be good enough for the front row. Oh, he's right out there in terms of the tra track limits as the Danish driver accelerates through, breaks the timing beam now, and goes quickest to 1 minute 36.6. Phenomenal lap from Mikel Mack, and that gives him pole by almost four tenths of a second. So that really lays down the gauntlet for the rest of them now. Rick Broikers still yet to emerge from the pit lane. As it racing teammate Michele Rugolo goes seventh and third of the Pro Ams on his last lap. Drift of Cristani and Onslow Cole, who are currently the top two Pro Am combinations. Seven and a half minutes to go. Mikel Matt flashing his headlights. He's already cleared Andrea Montermi. His next target is Ollie Wilkinson, who's just gone up into the top 10 on the basis of his last lap in the Optima Motorsport Audi. Mikel Mack, a very, very good first sector. Now the question is, has he been delayed at all by the Audi? As he runs out pretty wide once more. And we're seeing track limit penalties being applied left, right and centre on the timing screen. Through to the end of the second sector now, and it's another purple sector. This could be a further improvement for Mikel Mack. He's just got two corners to go, rides the curbs at turn 12, then into the parabolica at turn 13. Through the long right hand, he'll pick up the throttle as early as he dares to blast along the start and finish straight. Almost millimetre perfect out over the curbs. Mikel Mack accelerating through. Across line he comes once more. And it's another big improvement. A 1 minute 36.2 for Mack. Now that gives him pole position by three quarters of a second over Rick Broikers. But the Imperial Racing team have responded. They've just sent Broikers out of the pit lane. So it is going to become a little bit of a shootout. Cristani and Onslow Cole, they remain in the pitch. Raffaele Gimri, he's just improved to seventh. Mikel Mack is still going for it. Though first set's not quite as quick. He's got one of the Teo Martin Motorsport BMWs just ahead of him. It's not going to delay him too much. for Mikel Mack anyway. Can anybody else in the field get near to him? That's going to be the question. Also, do they need to in the way that the, the race could unfold this afternoon? Coming uphill through 
turns nine and ten. Still bottled up behind the BMW. Cara Marcio Basso, which is currently in 20th position. Accelerating through over the line. Squadron of Lamborghinis, Giovanni Venturini, that's the car with the fluorescent yellow piping. And the 25 car of Rick Broikers, that's the fluorescent orange. Venturini, that last lap we just saw him complete, has been good enough to propel him up into second position. So Giovanni Venturini goes second, and he's also flying through this lap. So it's game on here between the Luzic Racing Ferrari. Mika Mapsch has set the benchmark. The Imperial Racing Lamborghinis, but what has Fran Rueda got left in the locker here? The Teo Marti Motorsport BMW accelerates along over the line now. And Rueda goes fifth, 1 minute 37.0. He's within a second of pole position as well. So this is far from settled. We've got a deleted lap time for car 12. That's Fernando Ries. He gets cascaded down to 16th. And Giovanni Venturini, he started the lap very well. He's just coming towards the end of the second sector. That will tell us whether or not this is going to be on for pole position. Gets on the brakes desperately late. It's a good one for Venturini. His best middle sector of the session. Is it going to be good enough to overhaul Mikel Mack? He needs to find just under four tenths of a second as he takes a big bite of curve at turn 12 and then begins to build up the momentum into 13. I don't think the ARC Bratislava Lamborghini is going to delay him too much. Certainly not on this lap. Maybe next time around as Giovanni Venturini accelerates through. Across the timing beam. Oh, and it's an improvement, but not by all that much. 1 minute 36.5 for Venturini, so he's still three tenths of drift to pole position. Rick Broikers, meanwhile, has consolidated third. He posts an improved time of 1 minute 36.8. Campbell Walter remains in fourth. Fran Rueda in fifth. Fabrizio Cristani is sixth. He is the Pro Am pole sitter. Fernando Reese up to seventh. Tom Onslow Cole in eighth, second Pro Am runner from Rafael Giamria. Ninth, the third of the Pro Ams. Then Michele Rugolo completes the top ten. Antonio Coimbra still leads the Am class. Andre Lerandowski and Alexander Raquina. Marcio Basso, then the fourth of the Ams. And 20th overall for him. Swanslow Cole has just emerged from the pits. So he is on the out lap as well in the SPS Automotive Mercedes. Right at the very back of your picture. Got another time disallowed for Fernando Reese. But his adjusted time still good enough to keep him in seventh position. Just two minutes left to run. And this isn't settled just left. Yeah, here is Reese. What's been very impressive with Fernando Reese in the course of this session is that some of the other drivers have only done two flying laps, and that's been about that. For Reese, he's been able to run at a very consistently high pace, both well for the race and the Ombra Racing Lamborghini Huracan. Now here comes Tomon's Low Cole to the inside of Giovanni of Rick Broikers rather. And Ons Low Cole could yet challenge for pole position here. The SPS automotive will say for Richard Mill back car alongside Rick Broikers and that last lap for Tom Onslow Cole was good enough for third place and Onslow Cole hope for clear track for this final lap of the session because on that last lap even though he got delayed through the parabolic it was only half a second adrift and actually the car that he's just overtaken Rick Broikers was the one that he shuffled down into fourth position Onslow Cole he's going to get caught in a little bit more traffic here the pro out pole sitter Marcio Basso. He'll be hoping to clear the Teo Martin Motorsport BMW. Got another lost time for. That's an old one, in fact, as Mikel Mack watches the timing screen. Andrea Montermini, currently in 12th place, will be hoping for a late improvement. Oh, but he runs wide in the RS Racing Ferrari. He's got Oliver Wilkinson in pursuit. Motorsport Audi. 20 seconds left on the clock. So there's 
not going to be much more opportunity for an improvement. And I think for Mikel Mack, he knows he's done the job. And the reason for that is that Onslow Cole was somewhere just where he needed to be through the middle sector. Here's why. Marcio Basso running wide into turn seven. And Onslow Cole is not going to sneak through to squeeze another lap out of this session. Nonetheless, pro and pole position for Onslow Cole and the SPS Automotive Mercedes team. But it potentially could have been a little bit more than that. So Rick Broikers appeals Pitwood as well. And with the exception of Andrea Montermini, it doesn't appear as if we're going to have much in the way of improvements over the course of this final lap of the session. Here comes Montermini now. Ollie Wilkinson chasing him. Montermini breaks the timing beam. Personal best of the session, a 1 minute 37.7, but it still keeps him in 11th place. Ollie Wilkinson doesn't improve. Job done for pro and pole position, but for an unlucky run in the traffic, there was potentially a little bit more to come there, which would be worth watching for in the race. So it's just Peng Ling and Mira Knocka, whom we await to complete their sessions. And Knocka, the ALC Bratislava car, was, well, he was looking reasonably good through the first sector. It's gone away from him a little bit in the second sector. So it's going to be pole position, the opening race of the season for Mikel Mack, an absolutely thrilling session with three different manufacturers in the top three places on the grid. Ferrari heading Lamborghini, heading Mercedes. And we are in for an absolute treat this afternoon when the first race of the season gets underway at around about quarter past three local time here in Estoril. So if you're watching in Central European time, it's now ahead of that. So look then at the classification there. Mikel Mack, pole position in the Lusik Racing Ferrari, ahead of reigning champion Giovanni Venturini, who shares the front row with him in the first, the Imperial Racing Lamborghini Huracans. Tom Onslow Cole, Pro-Am, pole position, third overall in the SPS Automotive Mercedes, alongside Rick Broikers, fourth on his debut in the championship, the Imperial Racing Lamborghini Huracan. Jamie Campbell-Walter, an impressive fifth in the Drivex Mercedes, alongside Fran Rueda, who leads the Teo Martin Motorsport BMW Challenge in sixth. Fabrizio Crostani, seventh place in the first of the Daiko Lazarus Racing Lamborghini Huracan, second of the Pro-Ams, alongside Fernando Ries and the Ombra Racing Lamborghini. Then Raffaele Giamaria and Michele Rugolo, a very, very experienced fifth row of the grid. Former champion Andrea Montermini in 11th, alongside Kang Ling, the first of the Vicenzo Suspiri Racing, Lamborghini Huracans. Ollie Wilkinson, very solid 13th place on his first outing here at the Estoril Circuit, alongside Lorenzo Bairau de Viega. Antonio Coimbra heads the AM class in 16th place, just clear of Andre Lewandowski. And then Giuseppe Cipriani in 18th, head of Alexander Raquina and Marcio Basso. The field completed then by Marco Zanatini in the Crypto Motorsport Mercedes and Miro Knopka in the ARC Bratislava. Can. We have got an absolutely brilliant race in prospect this afternoon. Do make sure you join us as it will be Mikel Mack who will start from pole position in the opening race of the 2018 International GT Open season.